What happened out there? Uh, yeah. Uh, they just kind of got off, go off to a bad start right off the bat. Uh, missed a couple fairways early. Missed a lot of greens, and uh, because of that, and didn't make a single putt. But didn't have one putt until I got to started on hole two. Oh man, first one putt would have been had two putted eight for birdie. So then my it would have been thirteen when I hit a bunker shot to about a foot and a half. So I well, technically did one putt because he gave it to me. So well, match play is such a different beast, and we know that it is. you know you are so great. Like historically, you're so right. awesome at match play and. Does it get to you? Does, uh, like, does that get in your head a little bit differently than we would see you in like an individual stroke play? No, it's just I mean, it's obviously a little different when you kind of get behind so quick so early. Yeah. Um, even with a poor shot, a tee shot on two, I had you know I had a perfectly fine iron shot and directional wise, and looked like it was going to jump. Hit a six iron, end up to the front of the green, and the pin's 39 on. I looked at. Uh, my, my caddy, Cass, I go, well, we did a lot of speed work from 60 feet on in, but we didn't really work on 800 footers. I didn't really expect to have one of those. And, <laughs> and so, started the day by three putting and, uh, you know, one down and uh, hit a, I actually hit a good tee shot on three, which is one of those holes that kind of does not sit very well with me off of the tee. Yeah. So I did the hard part, what I thought was hit that fairway. And then, you know, I just hit a poor iron shot, made bogey right off the bat again. I, so I gave him two holes quickly. And yeah. I mean, it's disappointing, yeah, yeah. Another great drive on five, and uh, thought it was perfect over the bunker. Even Cam uh, was like, hey, great, great drive. We get up there, I'm a foot in the rough, make bogey there, and then he birdies the next one, four down through five, and, you know, the problem was I was giving holes away. Yeah. And when that happens, it, you know, especially out here and at this level of golf, it's almost impossible to come back, but. Uh, right. Well, there's know, always I, I tomorrow. Fought. You're going to yeah, come back exactly. tomorrow. Same thing as last year. Lyle was the one guy on the team that lost the match, and, you know, you know came down and won the, made the putt to win the whole thing uh, tomorrow. So Sunday's best, always. Yeah, it's just one um, of those things. But I'd love to, you know, this is so relatable. We all have yeah. these rounds. And can you show us how you come back? Obviously, you have to mentally reset. Right. And what do you work on? I'd love to have time for the driver at the end. I'd love oh to hit some balls with you. But right. what are you working on just to kind of get it back? Where do you yeah, start? I mean, well, I already did a little bit of putting right after the round, just kind of hard reset, kind okay. of get through the gates, make sure the ball's starting on line, and then and you know, this would be one of those days I come to the range and just put in a light session just to, uh, you know, reset everything. Just well, you said, I'd like about. to say light session involves three bags of balls, so. Hey. <laughs> light work. Hey. I grabbed three just so I don't have to walk back to get any in case those first oh, two bags don't work it. very well. <laughs> All right, so what do you have in hand? Uh, just start with pitching wedge, something okay. small, something light, just try to get my timing back. Um, okay, let's see it. It's kind of the only thing I heard from KK today after I got done is timing was quick, so. Now, what's a good tempo drill, or are you just, what's quick? Like, I mean, I'm sure people hear, hear that all the time. Quick. Is quick down at the bottom, at the top? What, is, what does that really mean for us? For me, I try to stay in a 3-1 ratio. OK. I have this thing on my phone called Tour Tempo. OK, can I show them? Uh, yeah. Oops. There, that? Yeah. So this is your tempo, though. So everybody's got to kind of find their own. Yeah. Now, I think that's the biggest thing for me is my rhythm. When I get kind of off, I get quick and jerky, then club gets late, then you either hold on to it and hit it way right, or you slam or shut and hit it left. So okay. for me, it's about just kind of getting that rhythm and just get the timing so I can control the face. Where is the 3-1? So it's 21-7 is mine on this. So it's three, three times. Your backswing from when you take it back is going to take three times as long as from the top to the impact. So oh, three to so one you're ratio. a slow takeaway. OK, yeah. let's see it again. Sorry. Obviously, you care about direction. Are you working on cutting it, drawing it, or just trying to hit just a straight ball, no spin? Well, with well, when the face is dirty, you're just trying to get it forward. But really, okay. the first five or six are just trying to match up the timing, and then I'll start worrying about the face. Got it. Yeah, because I mean, timing throws off a lot of things. And so for me, you know, I like to use my hands. We're obviously trying to calm them down as much as possible. But with using your hands, you have, your timing has to be good. If your timing's off, then you can 
and get sideways, and that's when my short game has to work. I'm sure this is a misconception, but do you still get nervous out there? Why do you? No. You don't? No. Now, how come you forget to keep your tempo? Try to hit it too hard. Try to hit it too hard, or if, or if I'm a lot of in-between clubs, if, uh, you know, if you know short's not very good, so you take one, you try to gear up on it a little bit, okay. start, you know, it's just kind of, it's always been my thing that if, if I'm gonna air, I'm gonna air getting quick and get jerky up at the top. Okay. And when that happens, then the club gets behind and then you slam it. All right, let's see one more of these. And then I kind of want to go through your bag if you don't mind. Okay. Okay, cool. I would have loved one of those today. Ooh. So you didn't have any of those, huh? No. No. Save them all for me. I know. I did. All right, so let's say we've worked on our tempo. Now what, what's next? Then just kind of do a little bit of ball control, some draws, fades, you know, try to make sure I can feel where the face is and you know, some of the off speeds, 75s. I mean, so if you don't have something like I do to use for tempo, you could always take a club and hit 75% swings. Cause I mean, if you try to, if you get quick with a 75, there's no way you're hitting it straight. Okay, I did a couple of these with KK yesterday. So can I do some with you? What sure. are we doing first? Uh, can I do we'll, some, we're good? Do you want to do 75, 85, or full? Which one? <laughs> Let's do 75s. Okay. And how do you, what are we hitting? Well, I'm hitting a pitching wedge, so I No, I mean, a, are we hitting a cut or a draw? I think we'll start with a draw since I need a little bit of confidence at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to really go 75 right, fade us, with a pitching wedge. Talk us through wedge. this draw, this uh, in That's unison draw for here. for me, so. Uh, okay. Now for me, it's just kind of aim aim a hair right, and obviously you want the, the club face just a hair closed to your path. Okay. So if you're swinging two degrees to the right, the face needs to be one degree to the right. How do we visually a... show that? Can we get in and show that Rods. really quickly? Okay, look, this is right, and put your club face on it. Right. So that would be that would go that would be blocked, obviously, because the path and the face match. Okay. So if that's the case, then this face needs to be a little shut for it to be a draw or open for it to be a fade. Okay. Now you don't want path to the right and open face. It's a bad combo. <laughs> All right, 75%. Yeah, 75% tight draw. Path right, slightly Both closed. Hair closed. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Pretty good. I think mine was, that was really good. All right, do another one. We have to hit not together. I think we can't be caught at the same time. Then you go first. And I'll go hit, and I'll hit from where you are. Okay. So that was a draw, and now would you hit, how many of those do you hit? I'd probably usually go up the ladder. So I go 75, 85 full, then I'll hit 75, we'll 85 switch? full. Okay. Yeah. So am I going 75 or 85? 85. All right, awesome. So then I'm going to play this ladder with you. I'm going to go 100. You go full? Full draw. Yep, stock draw. All right, I'm aimed right. A hair and, right. Oh, you got a hair move here though. <laughs> All right, now I'm nervous. Okay, aim right and draw. Too much draw? That was okay. No, that's fine, yeah. All right, cool, now let's go the other way. Oh no. 75 fade? I need a clean face if I'm gonna try that. I need all the spin I can get. <laughs> Wait, then I, should I be doing the same? Let me use, your, let me use yours. All right, you so. You want to use my dry towel? I am. Okay. Talk us through the other way then. Let's do it again. So then do you want to hit the 75er? <laughs> no. All right, so we're going fade. So we're so aiming fade, this way. Path going to be left. Okay. And so since path is left, face has to be open to the path for the ball to fade. So if you're two left, if you're two degrees left, if face is one degree left, uh, yeah. one degree. Again. Yeah. So if it's two and one, that ball would actually fade and fall on the flag. Got it. Now you're not doing any, you're not manipulating this with your hands. This is a body feel. Supposed to not use my hands, but I will definitely be using my hands on a fade. Okay. I mean, I, I'm working on getting it to where if I'm hitting the draw, it's just aim a hair right, passive hands. I'm hitting the fade, aim left, passive hands. Okay. Because that's the most, that's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. But I mean, for me on the fades, I always feel like I have to kind of use a little bit. Because like DJ has always said, the number one rule of hitting a fade is make sure it fades. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be some like serious wisdom. Oh yeah, from DJ. Yeah, a lot. 
Can you give us some other DJ quotes? That's the only one I got for you right now. <laughs> From Cap. Uh, I'm sure you have more <laughs> you than You go out, you play well, and you know. Yeah, just, you can't you share. Go ahead and, you know, just All go right, ahead and so do that. So here we are again. I'm aiming left, almost at so that left. How far do you hit bay. that club? Huh? How far do you hit that club? A full one. How far does it go? A full one? Like 55. Okay, so you're trying to hit a 150 yard fade. Okay. And let the body do it. Yeah. A little bit, okay, explain what happened there. It was kind of straight. Oh, you just looked like me, a tight draw. <laughs> well, I tried to hit the fade. Shot tracer, that yeah. was a fade. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so full fade. So the thing with that is, I mean, what that is right there is the path is going left where it's supposed to be, but your club face is too square to the path. Okay. So you're not actually getting right spin, so the ball's not curving. Got it. Now, I mean. All right, let's see 100% perfect fade. Look, tomorrow you're gonna be on it, I'm telling you. This little section yeah, with me. Yeah, I don't me. hit a lot of fades, though, out there. Kind of hit holds. Now I'm going to ramp this up, because that was a beautiful, beautiful finish. Uh, I would like to see you hit some woods, if you don't mind. OK. Talk us through it. I'm not going to grab it, because no one wants Which to Which one do you want to hit? Let's driver or three wood? Oh, well, three wood, I need, oh, oh. Wait, what do you need? What do you need? I need to work on the driver. OK, let's do it. Do we need your alignment stick? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that wasn't no. an insult. I was serious. No. Yeah, I was being, I was being serious too. No. Oh. <laughs> okay, so you're teeing it low. It, so do I you come start, straight out and just hit drivers? What do we do? No, I always work my way up. Okay. I start with uh, putting, chipping, then get into wedges, then full swings. Because I mean, it, it's just like every sport you play. And it is a, do you think Tom Brady, he's going to start warm up for a game going out and throwing 50 yard Hail Marys? Well, there's a guy behind you that I hear cranking them out 100%. Yeah, but that's the, he worked his way up to that. Got it. But you, you know, you get to work your way up into the, the swing. Also, it helps your rhythm and timing. But I always start with a low tee because okay. for me, going low 75 ers it allows me to feel like I stay more level. I don't, I'm not trying to lift the ball. And uh, it's a shot that I've been trying to actually use for the golf course because it allows me to kind of squeeze it and fade. But um, can we see one? Know, the 75er? OK. Um, so today, what kind of was your miss with the driver? Did you have a one way miss or? No, I had both ways. Yikes. Yeah, I uh, missed the first one right. Hit good. Next two were actually, actually next four drives, five were actually good. Then I missed one, uh, two left and then one uh, two right. How do you find neutral when you're out there and you're in the heat of tournament timing. play? Uh, back to, then All we go back timing. to your timing. Okay, so let's see one real quick. I was handed this, but I'm not excited about it. Well, you told me to grab it, so I'm not really excited <laughs> about it either. Okay, so it was a tight draw. Yeah. Do we like that? I would have loved that today. <laughs> That would have been amazing today. Here. I mean, but I mean, you know, so when I do the 75s, it's more about me just trying to stay level on it. Can you show us what, I mean, I think I'm, I'm pretty great at showing what level is, but explain it, because uh, I hit so far up starts. on it. Yeah, so a lot of people, when they get to a driver and you tee the ball up. Okay. So that's what I'm teeing it up as right now, but a lot of people, when you're sitting hitting a driver, you're teeing it up there. Okay. I mean, there's a lot different. I mean, a lot of people that get here, what happens is they go and they tilt back to help the ball up. Okay. When you do that, now the club's dropping behind you. You're swinging away to the right, so you either have to close it or you're gonna hit a high right. So for me, when I tee it down, it almost makes me feel like I'm hitting an iron swing where I'm now driving more on top of it and staying level and working the club through rather than up into it. Can you show us again? Can I just do a visual for your shoulders? Okay, so yeah. let's show level. So level would be more that way. So we're this way. Now do the extreme well, of... Well, level would be so, level of close Thank you, yeah, show that. That way. Okay. A lot of people, when you tee the ball up in the air, they get tilted and they go there, and now all of a sudden they're working up. Okay. Obviously it's exaggerated. Yeah. But I mean, for me, when I tee on down low, I'm able to drive forward and kind of ease my way into it, and then I'll go to a higher tee. Got it, let's do another one, and then would you mind going to that higher tee? So we can see the difference. Oops. I missed where that went, but we're going to smothered it left. Okay. I right, have one more. 
Okay. What does a smother left look like or feel like? What does it feel like? Uh, it feels like I just kind of get, instead of actually going forward end up with my weight, I get twisted. And so okay. when I twist, that right shoulder smothering on top of the golf ball. All right, well, let's have one good one. And I think we are at the end of our time. There's oh, a good one. wow. What a way to end. Reed, that was great. Thanks. Right. That was a good one. That was a really good one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It was great time. It was awesome. Yeah. Play ball tomorrow, huh? Thanks. Nice.